In this video, we're gonna take a look at six ways on how you, as a freelance web designer, could potentially make more money. Some of these things will be residual income, some of these things are gonna be one-offs, but all of them should help you create more revenue for your business. Hi and welcome to Freelance Friday by WP Tuts. My name is Paul C and this is the channel where I help you create a more sustainable freelance web design business. Today we're gonna to take a look at six real world examples of how you can potentially make more money with your business. So the first thing we're gonna take a look at is probably the most obvious when it comes to building websites and that is offering a hosting plan to your client. Now I tend to look at two different types of hosting plan. The first one is your typical vanilla basic hosting plan, where what you do is you charge a monthly or annual fee, then they get on with it and they do everything themselves. This is the kind of thing that's great if you've got a tech savvy client that's happy creating email accounts, logging in and doing all the things they need to do like backups and so on. But if you don't have tech savvy clients, I'd recommend taking a look at offering managed hosting. So managed hosting is a very simple option for your client. They pay you an annual fee with a slight increase over that basic plan, but what you do is you manage everything for them. So you'll create email accounts, manage backups, any technical issues that might arise, you'll deal with all of those things yourself. So the client is basically completely hands off, but you deal with everything for them so they have peace of mind. So the thing I would recommend is if you are going down either of these routes is when you're looking at picking a hosting company, you wanna make sure that they offer, first of all, a reseller account, so something that you'll have access to to create accounts, manage those accounts, suspensions, and all those kinds of things. But more importantly, make sure that you choose a hosting company that's reliable, ideally based in the same time zone as you are, ideally in the same country, because if you find that you are having any issues, you want to be able to get hold of them any time of day or night. So 24-7, 365 support is something that is vitally important, but a company that's reliable, you want to make sure that whatever you offer your client, whatever they're paying you for, that the whole process is painless for both them and yourself. So like I say, two types of hosting accounts, your hands off, so you let them get on with it and do themselves, or your managed hosting, which you charge slightly more for. This is something that can give you either a monthly or an annual residual income, and while you may start off with only a couple of clients, once that grows to 50, 75, or 100, you can make quite a nice income just from that income coming in every single month or year. So next up, we have domain management. Now, what exactly is domain management? It's very simple. It just basically means that you manage all of your clients' website domains. You register new ones, you renew anything that's up for renewal, and you effectively just build the client. And what you do is you put a small percentage on top of that for the process. So for example, you might put 20% on, so every time a domain is purchased or renewed, you make 20% on top of the renewal price. What you get then is a very happy client because they don't have to deal with domain registrations and management, they don't have to deal with hosting, and they don't have to deal with their website because you effectively cater for everything. So what you do is you put that small percentage on top and you make a small amount of money every time you do this. The nice thing is you may start off with two or three domains, but in a couple of years you might have a couple of hundred. This means you could be making a couple of hundred or a couple of thousands of pounds or dollars every single year just by managing domains. It's something that could effectively take you a couple of minutes a day, but like I say, you make a small return. Now it's not gonna give you as much money as anything to do with hosting, but when you add all these together, they give great residual income to you as a business and improve your cash flow. So domain management is another option. So the third option is all about the content for your client's website. So what I tend to do is I've got two different types of content management plans. What this does is it breaks everything up into two distinct sections. The first one is basic content. So that's new pages, new posts, anything to do with that, that's one plan. And what I do is I give that at a reduced rate depending upon how big a plan they purchase. So if they go for the basic plan that is six hours over a 12 month period, which they can space out any way they want, they can use three hours in one month, use nothing there for the next six months, and an hour in the next month, and so on and so forth. But what they do is they get my time at a 50% reduction. But what you tend to find is that a lot of the clients you may take out these kinds of plans won't necessarily use the entire plan in that 12 month period. Therefore, you end up making more money anyway. 
However, if you do have customers that work their way through that plan very quickly, you can then sell them a second, a third, or you can upgrade their plan to a further bigger plan. And again, this is something that can very easily start to mount up and make a good amount of money. Second version is I offer design only versions of this maintenance plan. So if a client comes to me and says, we love the website, but we think it's time to have a bit of a refresh. We want the front page redesigned. They might want their galleries updated with some new header images and so on. That's something that comes under design and not content. So by splitting the two up, you have a clear divide between the two different kinds of services. Obviously, it's entirely up to you. You may think, well, I'm just gonna have a maintenance plan that they can pick and choose whatever they want, but I like to keep those things separate because then when it comes to the time they want to update their website and they have just a typical maintenance plan for content, then that's a different thing that can be built for separately and ultimately you end up making more money. So again, these are the kinds of things that can very quickly mount up and create a nice residual income or annual income for you as you move forward and create more and more content for your clients. So the next one we're going to take a look at is software maintenance. Now, if you're selling a content management website or an e-commerce website, part of the process of keeping that website up to date is making sure that all the software, the plugins, the add-ons, everything is all up to date, making sure that all the security side of things is in place. So what I offer my clients is an annual software plan. And what that realistically means is that I will make sure that all the key software is up to date, making sure that they have minimal security risks. Now, there's a couple of things that are inside this particular plan that I need to make sure that are in there because otherwise it could ultimately cost me a lot of time, effort and potentially money. So what I say is as part of these plans, they are effectively only covering minor revisions. So, for example, where WordPress went over from version 4.0 so and so to version 5, that wouldn't be covered because that's a big consideration. So where they brought in things like Gutenberg, that could have a massive knock-on effect to all of the different plugins that are being used throughout that entire site. So that's something that I keep outside. But what I do cover are minor revisions. So these are tend to be bug fixes, little software updates, new features, things that generally tend not to break sites. So it's entirely up to you you want to do it. You could offer a multi-tiered plan. So you could say that we cover all minor revisions in this plan, and that's a lower price. And you have all revisions are covered at a higher price, entirely up to you how you want to do it, but it is a great way of making an annual revenue stream that ties into things like your hosting, your domain management, and so on. So consider that one as something you can add in to what you offer your clients as an ongoing service. Now, sometimes you have clients that don't necessarily want to use you for making content updates, but they don't necessarily know how to operate the website. This is where training options can come into play. So what you could do is you can set up various different ways you can provide training to your customer. You could do one-to-one -one training, you could do distance training, you could do screen capture, you could even do videos that you upload and create private sections on your website that they can access and get information on how to use the various different features on your website. However you want to implement it is entirely up to you, but offering training is a great way of increasing the amount of money you can make on a project. The other thing to consider is that when companies take on more people, new people to take over dealing with the website, they'll also need training. So if you are offering one-to-one -one or screen share or anything like that, you could then resell them the same kind of options and make additional income from that. So it's worthwhile thinking about offering training options to make sure that your client can create and work with the website you develop for them. So the sixth and final option we have is out of our support. Now just say for example that you've got a client that has a website and they're selling online and something happens at 6 p.m. on a Friday evening, you're not available, they might have to wait until the Monday to deal with this problem, you have a very unhappy customer. Now you can offer out of hours support, which means that outside those normal nine to five office hours, you make yourself available either via email, telephone support, online support, however you want to implement it. But what you do is you charge a premium for that ability to contact you outside hours. Now you may only have a few clients that actually take you up on this kind of offer, but offering it in the first place is something that can increase your amount of money you make on an annual basis. Again, residual income is a fantastic thing when it comes to work in web design. The last thing you want is to go from one project to another, to another, to another, and find you have big gaps in between where you have no income coming in. So creating this residual income is an ideal opportunity, an ideal way of making more money, but also more residual income over that 12 month period. It eases the whole process of working in projects that may be quite sporadic to start off with. So consider offering out of our support if this is something you're comfortable with 
it. Obviously, if you have a family and you have lots of commitments, this probably isn't the best option for you, but if you can offer it and you can charge a premium for it, it's another way of making money. So as a bonus tip, how about dealing with the social media marketing for your clients? Now, most customers, when they run a business, know that they need to have some form of social media presence, whether that's Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and so on. But they might not know exactly how to get the best out of it, the best times to post, how to post, or what even kind of content to post. This is where your skills can come in very, very handy. What you could do is you could set up a monthly, quarterly, or annual plan where your customer supplies you with a chunk of information that you can then spread out over the weeks and months to give that information out to their potential customers. You can use online software that makes the whole time of scheduling this very easy. You can spend one day a week scheduling the content for the next seven days for all of your clients. That's it, done for the week. Then you know that you've got that income coming in every single month or every single quarter or every single year that covers that time and effort you, you take to doing it. So this is something that you could use as a great supplement that goes outside the web design side of things, but you can employ your graphic design skills, your copywriting skills if you have them, to make sure that their social media has maximum impact. The beauty of this is, if you start to get results, they're gonna to start to give you more and start to spread the word. So you could very quickly and easily get out there and start making good money by doing social media marketing that doesn't take a huge amount of time or effort. And there we go, there are seven real world ways you could make more money from your freelance web design business. Have you used any of these and had success? If you have, let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to get your feedback on this. Speaking of the comment section, if you've got any tips or tricks or ways of making more money or better residual income, again, drop those in the comment section below. I'm sure we could all benefit from this great information and sharing the knowledge that we have. Now, speak in the comment section. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. That's perfectly fine. But let me know in the comment section below what you did or didn't find useful in this video. It helps me create better content for you moving forward. Well, as always, my name's been Paul C. This has been WP Tuts. And until next time, take care.